Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped. Now then, are you a fan of a big SUV but want slightly more sporty looks? Do you want to fly under the radar a little bit but still have a car that is epically fast and able to do 0 to 60 in under four seconds? Well, if that's you, then the car behind me is the car for you. The car behind me is an Audi RS Q8. Now I have featured an SQ8 on the channel before and it's boxier sibling, the SQ7. They're both very impressive cars and their performance is quite surprising when you look at the size and weight of these things. They do bend the laws of physics a little bit. Now I should have had an RSQ8 on the channel probably about 18 months ago or maybe more, but there was an issue with the press car I was due to have and I ended up getting a different Audi from the press fleet. So it's taken me a while, but finally I've got the RSQ8. And the reason I've requested this car this week is because I've had a really interesting and very busy week ahead of me. And I thought this car would be the perfect car. And I'm gonna do a, a kind of living with style video as a review. The things I've got to do, well, first up, I've got lots of driving this week on a combination of different types of roads, dual carriageways, motorways, and hopefully some really nice bendy, twisty stuff as well. Um, I need to go to an event in this with Tiffany Dell at Podium Place. I want to turn up in something cool and fast. A bit later on in the week, I need to put something massive in the back of this, so I'm going to be able to test its load capacity. And then at the weekend, I'm actually racing at Alton Park, and I wanted to turn up to a race meet in a fast car. And then I've got to go to the Cotswolds and meet up with Mrs. Greaves for a nice relaxing evening with some friends. So it's a really nice backdrop. I think the perfect car to do it. So let's find out a little bit more about the RSQ8. Now then, let's get spec and price out the way first of all. But this side profile for me, you really get to see this kind of coupe style uh, to the RSQ8. This color, not seen this color in person before on an Audi car. It's called Waitomo Blue Metallic, and it's a really deep metallic. It's a little bit like the Navara Blue I had my S4 in, but a darker, deeper color. And then the interior is just black leather. Very, very nice. Now, price-wise, these aren't cheap cars. So they start from 111,000 pounds. The only option of note that this car has on it is the Comfort and Sound Pack, which is just a shade over £2,000. That brings this car in on the road at £114,500. Ouch. The main reason I've used this angle is the wheels. Now, these are the standard wheels that come with the RSQ8, and, and I don't think they look particularly special. A few comments on Instagram pictures I've put up. I'm not a big fan. They do help the car fly under the radar and you've got quite a big sidewall as well. So I'm sure they're very good for the comfort on road, but they, they look quite small, but that's a 22 inch wheel. That's just how big this car is. How it can swallow a 22 inch wheel and make it look so small is just unbelievable. But if you actually look at the size of the brake disc behind that front wheel, it is gigantic. And then finally, before we get stuck into the living with part of the video, the engine under the bonnet, a big chunky four litre V8 petrol engine with some big numbers, 600 PS. But the biggest number is 800 Newton meters of torque. And that will propel this car that weighs about two and a half tons from naught to 62 in 3.8 seconds. That is nuts, absolutely nuts. We'll have to put that to the test though, won't we? Now, no surprise, it's an Audi. The interior is lovely, basically. It's quite subtle in this kind of black everywhere, but there's some nice um, machine looking um, aluminium trim, lots of gloss black. It's a super comfy place. But I'll talk more about the interior and the infotainment system and the driver assist features and the driving characteristics during our week. First thing we have to do is we need to try and get my bike in the back. Not my road bike, my e-bike, because it's gonna go and get ceramic coated. Okay, 
first up on this busy week is I'm going to go and get my bike ceramic coated, obviously. Now it is a couple of days later, you'll have noticed I've had my barnet snipped. Barber did go a little bit short on this one, but never mind. First thing we've got to do though, is get this massive e-bike into this massive SUV, a proper test of load space and practicality. I think I'm probably going to have to take the front wheels off, but let's see how I get on. I also need to take uh, a bike maintenance stand with me because the guys at uh, Fresh Layers don't have one. Fresh Layers, remember the guys that put the track pack PPF on my Boxster. So let's try and get the bike in the car and then head off to get some ceramic coating done. That'll just make the bike much easier to clean once I've hit the trails and come back with it all dirty. So it's a few minutes later, I've had to take the front wheel off, but I also need to take this track stand with me. So let me put that in first down the left hand side. Should fit quite nicely, I think. Like that. And then the bike should go in there with the wheel off. It's a heavy, heavy old hoss. Look at that, just about out of breath now, like an old man. Put that on there, we haven't got to go very far. This is the first car I've actually got this bike in. I did try it in an Arteon recently, but just didn't we bother taking the front wheel off. Uh, it's a lot of space. The big problem with this bike is it's just so heavy. I think honestly, if you've got an e-bike, your best bet is to get a tow bar mounted bike carrier, but anyway. It's in, next step, let's head off to Fresh Layers. Right, on our way. I've got to say though, <laughs> so the dash on the right hand side, when you open the driver's door, has got a really sharp point to it. And that's now twice I've banged my left knee as I'm getting into the car and I've just done it then and it really, really hurts. Brought tears to my eyes. Oh, and it's really sharp, you know. And I've done it once and I thought, I must remember not to bang my knee on the dash. Just bloody done it again. Ouch. Anyway, fresh layers only the other side of Chichester. Shouldn't be there uh, in too much time. Oh, ow. So the boys are busy ceramic coating the bike. I've got my camera there doing a bit of time lapse. It's coming out really, really nice. <laughs> Super simple, super that, uh, absolutely mega, mega job. So now I've got to get in my car, go home, pack my bag, because I'm off up to Podium Place in a minute, but my bike's nice and clean, just got to get the bike in the car. A very productive morning, bike is all ceramic coated. I've got lots and lots of lovely goodies. Look, I've got things like lots of cleaning towels and stuff. <laughs> so massive thanks to the guys at uh, Wax is Dead and Fresh Layers. They're always, so, I always love going there. I end up popping in for a quick cup of tea and the next thing an hour's gone by because we've been talking cars and stuff. Uh, but yeah, really interesting. So next on the agenda, I need to go home, uh, unpack the bike obviously, uh, and then pack up my stuff because about five o'clock today, Mr. Rick the Spud's coming over and we're gonna drive up to Podium Place. And I've got this evening, I'm hosting an evening with Tiff. So, we are on our way to Podium Place and I've got Rick the Spud behind me in his MX-5 and we've got walkie-talkies. I'm just going to do a launch control just to demonstrate to Rick how ridiculously fast this car is because it really is very, very fast. Okay, three, two, one, go. It looks like an RS Q8 is faster than an MX-5. So, on to the A34. Uh, we're only about 24 miles away from Podium Place. So this evening is, I'm hosting an evening with Tiffany Dell, the legend that is Tiffany Dell. And for me, I grew up watching Tiff on fifth gear and then well, top gear, then fifth gear, and I've now done a few things with him. We're both 
um, brand ambassadors for the Hendy Group, so we bump into each other at lots of things. So it should be a fun evening. When the evening finishes, so it's from 6.30 till 10, 10.30, I've then got to drive up to uh, Purple Palace near Alton Park, which is quite a schleck actually. So I don't think I'm gonna get to my hotel until quite late tonight. Um, but um, this is actually the first time I've had the RSQA on a dual carriageway at kind of cruisy speeds. And um, let me just probably just knock it out of sport mode into D. So in sport mode, it was holding itself in sixth gear. It's now gone straight up to eighth gear. And hopefully, hopefully we'll start getting better MPG because one of the things I have noticed about this car is it's quite thirsty. Uh, so far on this journey, in fact, hold on, what's the... So just this trip from my house so far, we've done 34 miles and I'm averaging 18 miles to the gallon, not 80, 18. Uh, the long-term trip on the car since I've had it, uh, 215 miles is averaging 17. Oh, I probably don't want to know. I just don't want to see those numbers. Uh, so I ended up sitting on the back row of the grid of the 1980 Belgian Grand Prix with me, alongside me, behind me, was Emerson Fittipaldi, one of my schoolboy heroes, me, Emerson Fittipaldi, found to be Kekke Rosberg, uh, um, John Watson, I, I, I can't remember any of it. So, so talk us through what, what it's like driving one of those period Formula One cars with the manual gearbox, round Monaco. I can't remember, I, can't I, remember. Can't remember. I still remember the bandage of my hand to change it, even the first two practice sessions of Monaco, we changed gears so many times, already the blisters had happened on my hand, so when I was going to around my head. This car, I don't know this car. Don't. Yes, look, that's the worst thing. It's waiting by the flipping phone to get the drive. I, I met a guy at a, uh, an event a couple of years ago and he'd... Good morning. Whew. Now, I was officially rubbish last night. Let me just start the car, get it warming up. Um, yeah, massively officially rubbish. So a couple of things. One, I forgot to film any sort of B-roll around the event with Tiff, <laughs> which was stupid of me. But um, today I'm testing the enduro car that I'm racing tomorrow at Alton Park. And I hadn't really thought too much. So I thought, well, I, I'm not gonna drive all the way home and then all the way back up to Alton Park. I'll get a hotel. I may as well just drive up to Alton Park after the event, get a hotel up next to the circuit and that'd be all good. And then I didn't realize the event didn't finish till like about 10 and it was a three hour, 20 minute drive to Alton Park. <laughs> so I would have got there at half one in the morning, which wasn't very good. Didn't go down very well with the boss. So um, the guys at Podium Place hooked me up with a hotel um, just near Newbury, Elcott Park. The retreat at Elcott Park, very nice it was too. Uh, so I got into my hotel room about, I don't know, half 10 uh, and it's now half seven in the morning um, and I am heading up to uh, Alton Park. Let me just plonk that into the sat nav and see how, <laughs> how long it's going to get. Uh, oh, excellent. Okay, so it's, it's just shy of three hours. <laughs> Two hours, 50 minutes, 166 miles. And I'm going to get there uh, as stands anyway at uh, 20 past 10, but I haven't had breakfast yet. So I'll grab some breakfast on the way. Uh, but what a absolutely mega event it was with with Tiff last night. Really great turnout. About 60 people turned up apparently. Um, it was, it was lovely, um, uh, a lot of fun. So thanks for anyone, of the guys who turned up, it was amazing. Um, I've got to tell a story though, one of the guys that rocked up, we were, we were chatting, he turned up with his, with his wife and we were talking away. Um, and then uh, afterwards he came up and had a picture taken with them and we were, I said, oh, how far have you got to go? And he said, oh, I live in Woking. And I went, oh, wow, I used to live in Woking. Um, and he said, oh, really? I said, yeah, near a sort of old Woking way. Um, place called Martinside. He went, I used to live in Martinside. And we worked out, it was exactly the same time. I said, yeah, what's well, the late late 90s, about 98, 99? He went, yeah. And then I looked at him and I thought, God, I thought I wonder what. I said, you used to have a Harley Davidson fat boy, didn't you? He went, yeah, and a Corvette. I went, you literally lived opposite me. I've been in your back garden. We, we used to know each other. I was like, oh my God. And then his wife said, God, he said he's been watching you for ages and always thought he knew you from somewhere. And there we go. <laughs> we used to live next door to each other like 30 years ago. Um, so one of the things I have noticed about this car is it, it does like Super Plus. 
Um, I'm in dynamic mode at the moment because I'm, I'm on some sort of, you know, A and B roads and it's a little bit more fun that way. But when you get onto the dual carriageway, I'll plonk it up into efficiency mode. It goes up into a higher gear and it's got this kind of mild hybrid system. So it kind of does sort of cylinder deactivation and coasting and all those things to try and sort of maximize your fuel efficiency. By maximize your fuel efficiency, I mean, maybe if you're lucky, you might get 20 miles per gallon. <laughs> <laughs> it will be very interesting to see what my long-term MPG is. Uh, but anyway, um, it's a shame I've got to rock up to uh, Alton Park today because there's some beautiful, beautiful driving roads in this vicinity. I know them really well, uh, especially one just over that way that I've done quite a few reviews on. And let's put it in sport mode. I mean, this thing gets a wiggle on down a road. It's ridiculous. I honestly don't know how how it does it. I don't know how you move this much mass so quickly. It's a ridiculous thing, absolutely ridiculous car. This, I'm starting to really like it though. It's still ridiculous. All my motorway driving is now done. I'm but 18 miles from Alton Park, but I'm happy to report that my MPG is now up to 25.6. 25.6? That's amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, for this car anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that's in efficiency mode, cruising at 70 miles an hour on the motorway for the last hour and a half, basically. Uh, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful day for a test day. Can't wait. Here we go, Alton Park. Now I've got to find my garage and my team. So it's been a test day on all day today. I'm just in the afternoon session. Um, but that was uh, 165 miles, just shy of three hours, two hours 56, average speed of 57 miles an hour, and an MPG of 24.8. Not bad. I'm, I'm desperately low on fuel then. I've only got 30 miles of range left, so um, let's go and find. Let's go and find me pits. This is radical. He's quite quick. The closing speed between him and me and my little fourth car over there is quite disconcerting to be honest, but all's going well so far. Um, I've had two sessions, the weather's amazing, the guys from uh, Race Logic are just fantastic, the two mechanics looking after the car, really looking after me, and we've had the ability to come back in after a session and debrief on the data that the V-Box on the car creates, and, and it is like being a proper racing driver, it's exactly what your Formula One drivers would do, they'd come in and they'd, they'd look at the data and, and it makes you faster. Uh, I love it, I just bloody love motor racing. I just wish I had more money so I could do it more often. <laughs> anyway, I'm back out in the car. Good morning. <laughs> it is the next day and I'm up bright and early on my way to the circuit. Um, I thought I'd, I'd get changed into my race suit in my hotel room because I'm gonna have to be in it quite quickly anyway. And, there's something about racetracks, there's never anywhere to change. You always end up either getting changed in the toilet with piss all over the floor, or in the back of a garage where everybody can see you. So I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna get changed into my race suit in the hotel room. Um, on the way back from the circuit last night, I did fill up because I had a fuel warning when I got to Alton Park yesterday saying I only had 30 miles left. I put a hundred pounds in and that was that's filled it seven eighths <laughs> i thought i'm going to stop at 100 quid or just shy so i could contactless pay um and that's given me a range of 375 miles so let's say uh 300 uh, sorry 100 pounds is going to give you about 350 miles in one of these things there or thereabouts busy day today so it's race day today um, I get to meet, I met one of my um, uh, co-drivers uh, last night. I'll meet the other two today, which is very exciting. Well, there you go. It's very nearly dark. <laughs> that was the end of an epic, epic day of racing. We ended up P18. That is the team's best result this year. Really tricky conditions. It rained the whole race. Um, and then the further that we went into the race, there were cars going off all over the place, mud all over the track. Conditions got really, really slippy. But absolutely brilliant, brilliant um, day. Now, I'm now 
hightailing it back to the RSQ8 because I've got about a two, two hour and 20 drive to the Cotswolds uh, where Tracy is with the pups at our friend's house because we've got dinner this evening <laughs> and I'm running a bit late. Don't! Now then, tis the next day I got to our friends in the Cotswolds. Actually, it's a fairly good run. I was there about half past eight in the evening. Very long day yesterday, but an absolutely epic day. I slept well and dreamt well. And actually, um, it turns out we ended up finishing P17 because the second place car got disqualified for an infringement with their ABS, apparently. So that's definitely the best finish the team's had this year. But I'm here uh, in the Cotswolds. I'm actually driving down the driveway to the Fish Hotel because I'm just about to pick up Ben, my godson, who works here. Um, and then we're gonna go out um, with Tracy and his mum and dad for lunch. Um, but I thought it would be quite funny on the way home. We were chatting last night and Ben's never done a launch control before. So considering this car has a very, very spectacular launch control, I thought it would be quite good to do one. But look at that view. Wow. Absolutely amazing. So let's go and pick up Ben, find a straight bit of National 60, and do his first ever launch control. <laughs> I'm just clapping you. Welcome to the channel, mate. No, it synchronizes the the uh, cameras together so you can you can sync them in the edit. I just saw you're a lunatic. I am a lunatic. This is Ben, my godson. Welcome to YouTube, mate. Hi. <laughs> now, you've never done a launch control? No. Would you like to do one? Sure. <laughs> so we do have to be careful. This is Fish Hill, which is an awesome bit of road, but I know because I've just driven up it that there's a speed camera at the bottom. But to do launch control, we're in dynamic mode, so that's the sportiest mode. Uh, I need to just put it into sport gearbox, and then the most important button is this one. I need to push and hold that, because that turns all the traction control off. So traction control is now off, so we can now engage launch control. Okay. Once we've gone past the speed camera that's just around this corner. And then all you do with launch control is we come to a stop. I put my left foot on the brake as hard as I can and then my right foot all the way to the floor on the throttle. And just, and it, it just sit there and go, and then you just let your foot off the brake and it just goes. Yeah, I'm scared. And it'll do naught to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Wow. <laughs> Which isn't very, very long, really. Are we ready? Sure. Ready? Foot flat on the gas. Launch control. <laughs> is that not the most pointless feature on a car? Yeah. Yeah. But it's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> so, on our way home. Now I've got Tracy up front in the Defender. And we've split the dogs. So she's got the petrol pup. And I have got the petrol pooch. And we're on our way home. And on the way, I thought I'd just finish up this week with the RSQ8 and give you my final impressions because I found it fascinating this week living with this car. It's an absolute belter all round. But hopefully we'll find some nice roads. And actually, we're now going up Fish Hill, which we came down before. The speed camera's gone. <laughs> all right, dude. Hey. Is it nice coming in this car? Chilling out. So let's have a talk about driving this car down a twisty road the driving dynamics of these big SUVs especially the performance SUVs that you can get nowadays just blows my mind this car does not drive like a big two and a half ton bus it's a very big car and there's no denying it you can't hide that kind of mass you can't hide the kind of footprint so it is a big car but it doesn't actually feel that big when you're driving it, which is a really clever trick to pull off. And I found that when I drove the SQ8, but the thing that this RSQ8 has on top of that is this immense powertrain. It's got so much grunt, but you don't feel that 
on normal driving, unless you put it into one of the dynamic modes and you push on and you squeeze that throttle, it's a just it's just a normal car to drive. But when you do squeeze that throttle, by goodness me, it's a fast car. And I think we've seen that in the couple of launches that I've done. It's got an amazing engine tone. Um, outside the car, when you turn it on, it's got a real V8 growl and you can hear it ticking over and when you accelerate away. Um, it really does sound fantastic. Um, I guess the biggest challenge I have with it is it's mighty thirsty. I mean, we're talking really quite seriously thirsty. Uh, the long-term trip that I'm running on it at the moment, 566 miles and I've averaged 19.7. And actually on my short journey, we've not been going very long, we've only been going 26 miles, I'm only averaging 15. Slightly unplanned, it is now the next day. I had intended to conclude this video at the end of my journey home yesterday, but unfortunately I didn't turn off the main GoPro um, correctly and uh, it ran out of battery. So when I got to Harting Hill to do my clothes, um, it didn't work. <laughs> so I'm having to do it now. What are my final conclusions then um, after a week with the RSQ8? Well, there's no denying it, it's an impressive vehicle. It's a very, very comfortable and luxurious place to do a long journey. And I've done plenty of miles this week. And one of the reasons I wanted this car this week was I knew I was gonna have a whole mix of things to do, whether that was putting my e-bike in the back, going to uh, a couple of events where you wanna turn up in a nice car, doing lots of miles, driving on some really nice roads. This week has had all of those things and this car has performed so well at all of those things. However, for me personally, that particular car in that spec isn't for me. I love the color. I just think it's, it's too basic a spec for an RS. It doesn't really look like an RS model. I'm still absolutely dumbfounded that those wheels look so small on the car, even though they're 22 inch wheels. Um, if you took the RS badging off the front and the rear, you, you would probably struggle to realize it's an RS car, actually. I saw an RSQ8 Vorsprung in Broadway um, at the weekend in Nardo Grey with blacked out badging and different wheels. It just looked every inch an RS car. And for me, if you're going to spend the money to get an RS, you want it to look like one. If you were going to go to this kind of more subtle fly under the radar, you may as well get an SQ8. They're cheaper. Um, if you get the SQ8 with a diesel engine, they're far, far more um, economic. I've got a friend of mine who's got an, uh, uh, an SQ7. He gets like 35 miles to the gallon on a long run, but still has 85, 90% of the performance. But it is an epic vehicle. It's so quick. It has that ability to overtake things in a heartbeat, even though it's such a massive vehicle. It's got so much luggage space. It's got so much passenger room, so much comfort. It really is a very impressive vehicle. It does like Super Plus <laughs> a lot. Um, on a long journey, I think you're looking at, you know, 23, 24, maybe 25 miles to the gallon. If you're pushing on down a B road, then, then you're gonna be in the teens. And, and potentially low teens. So it is a very thirsty vehicle, but it sounds good and it goes fast. And it actually, when you get to a corner, it goes around corners really well as well. So very, very impressive. But let me know what you think of the RSQ8. But for now, the car actually gets picked up in about an hour's time. So I've just got enough time to quickly pop up to the shops to get me tea. But if you enjoyed that, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrofed for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film. Take care, guys. Drive safe.